Hey you guys, it's Vandy Azul, back again from the Card Fight Vanguard deck profiles. If you guys enjoy, don't to like, comment, subscribe, and don't to the Patreon. And let's get one started. So, as you can tell by like the first slide here, we can all see I am doing a deck profile on locks. First up, yes, you are correct. This is the f uh, first deck profile of the V Collection sets. I'm not so sure if other people have started posting their deck profiles yet on YouTube, but I'm at least going to do it early because, you know, I want some first thoughts on people just to see how early it is. But also because... <laughs> The reason why I'm doing specifically locks first is because this is the one you expect the least of. Because what Bushy did is, like, they gave every grade 3... I mean, they gave a lot of units reverses. And then they gave us a lot of secondary grade 3s. And in Kagura's case, three main grade 3s. Yes, technically one of them is support grade 3. But I built three different Kagura decks, all focused on the three grade 3s. We don't need to talk about that right now, because we'll talk about it in a later week. So, basically, what I did is I took all the secondary grade 3s and put them into their own deck. Now you may be thinking, yes, Lox is meant to be a support grade 3 despite the fact it has two vanguard skills. Guess what? I made a deck that made Lox the main grade 3, and honestly, I'm kind of scared of it. So let's go ahead and get to this deck starting, and you guys will see why I'm scared of it. First up, our starter is Blackboard Parrot, 6k base, 5, 10k shield, grade 0 with boost. Auto is right upon draw a card, then if your opponent's vanguard's grade 1 or grade, put a quick shield ticket into your hand. We all know this, it's a standard ability, you get a draw guaranteed, unlike in D, and you possibly get a quick shield ticket. If you go second, honestly, when I tested this deck out for the first time, because my first time playing V since the last V Clan collection, I actually forgot about the Quick Shield, and yeah, they kind of killed me because of it, but I mean, it wouldn't really have mattered, but yeah, the, you will never forget the Quick Shield, because it's actually somewhat important. So, I picked back Prepare because, uh, you know, Locks used to be the main grade 3 of the weird kid that wanted Kamui's girlfriend, Emmy-ish, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember him very much. All I remember is that he wanted, he was hitting on Emmy or wanted Emmy to hit on him. Something about that line. He got beat by Kamui. Doesn't really matter. Point is, I, I just ran this as a starter because that's the standard great nature starter for most of the clans back then besides his because his was a ride line. Trigger wise, we run four copies of the draw trigger cable sheep because we need to draw PG. We all know what it does contain a synonym. You have to force items in your deck. Auto guard circle in place. Discard a card from your hand. And one of you cannot be done a battle. Standard PG. Nothing too special about it. We want the draw PG because we want to get hand cards. And then the PG because, uh. If you saw what most of this deck is, you would understand why. <laughs> Next up, we have four heat, uh, eight fronts, and four of them being cast in a donkey, the other four being Correction Chinchilla. Okay, and then after our fronts, we have our heel trigger, except our heel trigger is this. Gifted Dragon Iketa Laurea. I don't know how to say that, but our heel guardian. Grade 3, Twin Drive, 15k shield, 10k base, heal trigger, auto, when it's placed on guard circle from your hand, if you do not ride a grade 3 or greater during this fight, perform one of the following, choose a vanguard, it gets plus 10, choose one of your vanguards, it gets plus 10, or choose one of your opponent's units and it loses 2 crit for the battle, and auto, when it's placed on rear from hand, if your damage zone has 0 cards, put the top card of your deck into your damage zone. Okay, you may be wondering why this is in my deck when I literally advocated for not running heal guardians, or at least when I, I didn't tell people not to run heal guardians, but I said I don't like running heal guardians because they don't work for me. It is because of Lox's skill. If you don't know what Lox's skill does, we will go over it later, but I'm just going to remind you now. Its skill says that any grade 3 that is seen, regardless if it's a trigger or not, goes to your hand, and the rest go to drop. If I'm going to be forced to lose a heal out of deck, I'm at least going to put it into my hand. Because the reason why I didn't do it with Dimension Police is because Dimension Police, you wouldn't have to add a heal and the cards that you look for go back to your deck anyways. In this one, they're not going back to deck and they're going to drop zone. So it's at least coming to my hand, but it's I want to let this be clear. It's not because of its skill at all. Literally, if this was a vanilla, it would be just as it would still be in the deck solely because it's a great three. There is no other reason why this is here. I swear to you on my life of that. And I regretted putting, and not, not regretted, but I hated putting this in because it involved me compromising my morals. Four copies, I guess, just because I need it so I don't lose a heal trigger for no apparent reason. On to our grade ones, two copies of Tapping Cat. AK base, 10k shield, grade one with boost. Auto ones retired on rear or within this card is discarded from your deck. Soul blast one and perform one of the following. Draw a card or choose one of your rear guards against plus five for the turn. Okay, so a lot of people say Great Nature does have a soul problem. I greatly agree with this, and Bushy keeps giving us more soul blasting cards, especially because Coiling Duckville is one of them. But honestly, I like this card. You know, if it dies on rear, you get a draw. I mean, granted, there's only one rear guard that can actually kill it, and if it's discarded from deck, there are very few ways to do that in this deck. You get a draw or a plus five to you, and all around is really good. It gives you that minuscule plus five that's going to make a certain combo that will go over later really easier. If it wasn't a soul blast cost, I'd say it'd be better, but it's fine. It's two copies, just because of that Soul Blast thing, though. 
Three copies of Coiling Duckbill, AK Base, 10k Show, Great Owns Boost. All those discarded from your deck, Soul Blast 1, and add it to hand. So, you know, if you mill it out, it goes back, back to hand if you Soul Blast. And for it, an auto rear, when your other rear guards retire by your card's ability during your turn, Soul Blast 1, retire, draw a card. So, if your other rear guard dies, you can have this die too to get a draw. Okay, so like Link Joker matchups are fine, I guess, because you're losing board, but. You know. <laughs> More soul blast cost? Why couldn't Duckbill be shove himself to soul to get the draw? I know that's not what Duckbill used to be, but come on. Or like the just the mill ability be shove himself to soul. Come on, game. The three, I guess, cause you know, you want the draw, especially in this deck where you're gonna go crazy with something, but the soul blast makes it questionable whether you want this or not. Next up, we have four copies of Diligent Assistant Mini Belly, our last grade one, 8k base, 10k show, grade one boost. Continues rear guard during your turn. If you have a unit on the additional rear guard, circle against plus five, it can call it in itself, so that's really easy. And auto van rear, when placed from hand, look at top five cards of your deck, reveal up to one grade three from among them, put it to your hand, shuffle your deck. If you put a guard, you gotta discard one. You do not know how much that ability helps this deck and how often that will most likely go off. Just, I'm gonna leave it at four, and then I'll explain in a few minutes. Next up, we have our grade twos. Two copies of Compass Line. 13k base, grade two, intercept, 5k shield. I struggle not to say grade three. Uh, auto van or rear at the end of your turn. Choose one of your rear guards and retire it. This effect is mandatory. Yes. So I really like how when Bushy brings back all their cards, they used to have resist, which basically meant like they had a specific cost to use them because they had they're all grade twos and they always had like higher base power than grade twos, but you had to do something specific to use them. Like Brutal Jack was counter blast one. This was just kill a rear guard at the end of the turn. I think it attacks or when it battles. I don't remember. And then there was one for uh, there was one for Dark Regulars that said Soul Blast three, if I remember correctly. Compass line here is really good because it has the numbers of a grade three from Overdress, aka Force Markers, and the only requirement is you gotta kill a rear guard for it, and you can just activate one of these two for that. So, really good. Only downside is I run him at two because you don't want to keep sacking your rear guards over and over again, especially when Locke sacks two of your grade three rear guards to kill two of your opponent uses and nets you two draws for free. But Compass line is still a pretty good option. Two copies. Next up, we have two copies of Measured Fusa, 9k base, 5k shield, grade 2 with intercept, auto van or rear, one place from hand, counter boss one, look at top two, call up to one from among them, and send the rest to drop, so way just to, I guess, get an extra rear guard, and auto rear once per turn, when it attacks, if your vanguard's a grade 3 or greater, so boss one, treat one of your rear guards, gets plus 10 for the turn, and at the end of the turn, retire that unit. Okay, here's why you run this. You don't run it for the retire, because you're already losing, like, two cards from, from locks, but you run this, because if you combine this, locks, and culture gorilla together, you get a field restand, and against force decks, unless they are at 3 damage, they will die to this unless they also pull a trigger in the process of doing so. Because this deck wiped out a full hand of triggers and only lost because a damage check was a critical trigger for the 5th damage. Not even joking. It was bare survival at the least. So 2 copies of Measured Fusa, even though Fusa wasn't even a part of that plan, so, so that's the funny part too. Fusa wasn't even a part of it. So, you know, you, we all know this deck can go crazy. So two copies of Fusa though, because you know he can be helpful, he can get you out of board, especially because this deck doesn't actually counterblast that much unless you get crazy into it, and there's a way to get plus 10. And plus this deck does not have a soul problem compared to the other ones. Like a lot of people say Lox makes the soul manageable. That's only when you actually use him as a support grade three. If you use him as the main grade three, the soul is not a problem. To some extent. If we get rid of Culture Gorilla, it's not a problem, but if we keep Culture Gorilla, then it's a problem. Three copies of Geograph Giant, 9k base, 5k shield, grade 2 with intercept, continuous rear guard. If it's an additional rear guard circle, it gets plus 8. So if you put this on Excel 2 or an Excel 1 during your turn, if it's on Excel 2, it's a 22k. If it's on an Excel 1, it is 27k during your turn, but then on your opponent's turn, it's always going to be a 17. Either way, that's really good. Get you numbers, get you swings. You combine this with Culture Gorilla, really powerful. The only downside is he doesn't get buffed by locks, but. You know, pump him up just a slight bit from maybe Fusa, and you know, he's got numbers or triggers. So, three copies, because these are good. One cop, and now into our many grade threes. Yeah, my Bastion style kind of leaked over here. I think there's a grand total of 21 grade threes, and that's because, you know, we got to pump up locks really well. If, if you want to know, by the way, I did test this out beforehand, and like I said earlier, this deck does actually work. You just have to be as crazy as I am to use it. So first up, our first grade 3 is Vacuuming Tortoise, grade 3, twin drive, 12k base, auto rear when placed, counter boss 1, nuke all of your hand cards, return up to 3 normal use from your drop zone to your deck and shuffle it, if 3 are returned, it gets plus 20 for the turn. Okay, here's why you run this. 1, get back your grade 3 so you can keep looping it despite the fact this is a finisher, but the reason why this is at 1 is because locks can search the top 3 every turn. 
So it's not that hard to see it. You have mini belly, so you have like a grand total of five searches every turn if you try hard enough. I mean, granted, you'd only get five searches in one go, but still. And, you know, the 20k is a really good finisher, especially because since it swings for 32 and Culture Gorilla restands everything that's a 25k swinger or greater, then this thing can restand and swing for 232s with God knows what else is on the board. And I, the way I use this is I just, like, let my hand get down to low enough numbers, go for a rush to where I only had to discard two. All around, Vacuuming Tortoise does a lot. You just have to time it right. But when you time it right with this deck, he hits for numbers and in all honesty is a really good finisher, especially when you got a board restander. One copy. Two copies of Honorary Professor Chet Nodar. We run him for the sake that, like, once more, unless you do it stupidly, you don't really have a counterbalance problem, and to, like, activate mill out effects from Duck Bill and uh, Tapping Cat. 12k base, grade 3 ginger, uh, Excel Gift, not Persona Ride. Auto Van once or rear once per turn when it attacks counterblast one draw a card discard the top card of your deck and perform one of the following effects depending on what the card's type is as the unit is on van it performs both regardless of the type normal unit choose two of your rear guards i get plus five for the turn at the end of the turn retire those units trigger unit choose one of your rear guards and it's end of turn this you that unit can attack from back row and gets plus five and at the end of the turn retire it so you know it gets you small numbers and allows them to attack more Here's why this is important. Locks already gives them plus five if, if Locks is on Van. This gives something else plus five, that's a plus 10. P combine this with Culture Gorilla and 5k more, guaranteed it's probably gonna swing for numbers. Like, like that's what China Noir is here for. Get your rear guard attacks, get you more power, allows for multi-attack if it is on Van. I mean, granted, it can do the multi-attack anyways without being on Van. All around, the deck is very crazy. It is very powerful. It is, I remember before, I think I said it in my Bastion set four deck profile, which you guys will see later this week. Or maybe I just said it at some other point in time. But basically, at some point, I said that if you had Magnolia swinging for, like, half of Bastion's numbers at the very least, I think the deck would be crazy. This deck is a testament to that statement, I swear to you, because I even proved it multiple times. So two cops of Chat Noir, because he can be useful. Because, you know, all he is is kind of about one, and you still get a draw out of it. So, really good. Two copies. Two copies of Hamsuke's rival Rocket Pencil Hamadon. This is what you spend your counterboss on. If you have any spare counterboss, use it on this motherfucker because he's the one that gets you soul. 12k base, grade 3, twin drive uh, excel gift, auto van or rear once per turn. When your other unit is placed on your additional rear guard circle, counterboss one to shove a hand card to soul. That in this unit gives plus 10 to end of turn. If you have two or more additional rear guard circles, you draw a card. So, you know, first grade 3 turn, this thing hits 22. Whatever else went on to the excel circle gets the plus 5 slash plus 10 plus another plus 10. And you possibly, well, you don't get a draw if it's the first grade 3 turn, but if it's second grade 3 turn, you can also get more numbers. And all around Hamadon really helps. He can get you hand cards, he can get you soul cards, guaranteed. He gets you power, which allows this deck to hit even crazier numbers with Culture Gorilla. Yeah, Culture Gorilla. I remember I put him in there, even though I knew he would never go off in my like original Great Nature deck in real life, just because I needed something that wasn't a mill card. Who Culture Gorilla carries in this deck. Like Culture Gorilla hits hard. If you see me throw it on Culture Gorilla, kill it as soon as possible. I don't care what your other priority is. Kill the fucking Culture Gorilla, because that's what the dangerous thing is. Two copies of Hamadon, though. Speaking of which, Culture Gorilla, Mandala's favorite card that I own as the PE teacher. Here's why. Grade 3, Twin Drive, uh, 12k base, auto van or rear. At the end of the battle, your vanguard attacked. Soul Blast 5, stand all of your 25k power greater rear guards. If you stand two or more, retire all your opponent's rear guards. So, one, it's a Soul Blast 5, which you might think is hard in a Great Nature deck. But when Locke sends a hand card to Soul, and this sends a hand card to Soul, and you're going to try to keep this thing on the field as long as possible, and you already have two cards in Soul, when you ride into locks, you got four hand cards. Either ride again or get another Hamadon out and get another soul. Boom, you have five soul for culture. And then, you know, so it's not that bad. But then also, I mean, he does go through all your soul in one go. But standing all of your 25k or greater power rear guards, they may sound hard because locks only buffs them plus five. But with the extra fronts and uh just any number at all like these grade threes genuinely do hit really big numbers very quickly especially this one over here and they always swing for big did they get that restand and if you stand two or more which is almost guaranteed you nuke to all of your opponent's rear guards so culture gorilla is actually really good like i remember i put him in my original great nature deck like i said earlier but I never got to use him because like I would never be able to get the soul no matter how much I tried like I would have to ride three consecutive times and let the game go on that long but there's no way in hell it would go on that long because my deck could not stall that much and it, any deck that I couldn't and any deck that would let me get there would probably be dead by that point so Culture Gorilla is like I, I, I loved the idea of putting him in there but I never got to use him and after I got to use him for the first time whoo 
Dude proved me right that I was right to put him in my deck because he's dangerous. <laughs> Two copies of Culture Gorilla. And then next up, we have three copies of Amber's Triangular, 12k base, grade 3 Tinger Persona, I mean Excel Gift, we need this here. Continues Vanguard or Rearguard during your turn, if you have no other Rearguards in the same comb as it gets plus 10, you put this on Excel Gift, it's, a, it's an immediate at least plus 27, because the Excel Gift at the least will give it plus 5, and then this gets plus 10, so 27 on its own, assuming that you picked Excel 2. And Auto Van Rear, when its attack hits, choose one of your Rearguards, it gets plus 10 for the turn. I don't need to explain why this is good, especially if you are maybe lacking a bit numbers from Lox's skill. Yeah, plus 10. Also, if you're wondering why, like, half of them are at 2 and then the other half are at 3, that is mainly because, like, once more, locks can search all of them. So, granted, it's from the top 3, but, like, he can search all of them, so we don't really need them at high numbers, so we might as well go for versatility instead of copies, and they're pretty powerful anyways. So, 3 copies of Amber Strangler, he is definitely one of the playmakers, because, you know, he gets you more power. 3 copies of Arm Destructor Bison, my old ace of great nature in real life, and the sole reason why I own big belly in real life so i have to run him but also he's really good in the deck uh grade three twin drive excel gift 12k base auto van a rear when it attacks counter buzz one and one of your other rear guards gets plus five for the turn and if you if it's on van to stand that rear guard so you know it gets plus four guaranteed and if you put it on van because maybe you're not on locks right now you can stand that rear guard and all around that's a pretty good choice just to get an extra rear guard stand out of it and allows for small attacks definitely a budget card but it's still pretty good budget card i say and he Always is there for me when I need him. Like, he has genuinely been... Every Great Nature deck I run him in, he has always been there when I wanted him or when I needed him. He has been by my side, and I feel appreciated by that, and I gotta give him a place in this deck. He goes in at three. And finally, our last unit, because once more, I don't like to run orders in my V decks. We run four copies of Guardian of Truth. Locks. Grade three, Twin Drive, Excel Get, 12k base. Okay, so we already know I like this because if we all know, all of you should know by now, especially by the title of my video that just says, yes, with an elephant in it that just has the caption, yes, on it. I love elephants. They are my favorite animal. Seeing this already was a guaranteed, like, cool for me. But then when they said it was support, I was kind of disappointed because I wanted it to be a Vanguard card. Yeah, and then they released it. Whew. The second they released it, I was like, you know what? People are going to try to make this support card. What is something I can do that's unexpected? Make this thing a fucking main grade 3. That's what I did, and I enjoyed every moment of it. So let's go ahead and get it skill done. Act. Vanguard Circle. Once per turn. Put a hand card to soul. Reveal top three cards of your deck. Put all grade 3s from among them to your hand. Discard the rest. If you put a grade 3 into the soul for this cost until end of turn, it, it gets continues Vanguard. All of your grade 3s get plus 5. So that includes himself. 17k base on the van. All your rear guards get 17, most likely, if they're on grade 3s. And not to mention, it's all the cost of a hand card. And if you send a grade 3 to soul, once more, like, there are plenty of grade 3s in this deck. Like, let's count real quickly. 4, 7, 10, 12, 14, 16, 19. Okay, well, I was wrong earlier. I thought there was 21, but it's still 19. That's a pretty good number of great threes. So the chances of you not hitting them are very doubtful. And in all of my test games, I have always had that ability to go off where I subbed a great three to soul and I was still able to filter out my great threes. So getting that 5k is really nice. And then auto van at the end of your turn, choose up to two of your great three rear guards, retire them. For each card retired, draw a card, choose an opponent's rear guard and kill it. So, you know, way to kill your opponent's rear guards, way to get you hand cards for free, by the way. It gets you soul, it gets you power, and it gets you searches. Oh wait, no, there is tw no, there's 23 actually, because I forgot the heal trigger. The reason why it's here, the heal trigger. So there's 23 great threes. All around, this deck is actually really good. Like, you can take my, you can choose to take my word for it. You can choose not to take my word for it. But I genuinely mean it when I say this deck, despite the fact I agree. Making locks a main grade three, especially making 23 grade threes in a deck, may have not been a good idea in theory. It genuinely did work out like this deck is very powerful and it has a lot of good skills behind them. Like these are all just a bunch of grade threes randomly come together. Like they say a lot, they gave us a lot of grade three options that help support them. Amber's Triangular was one of them, but the other ones were on the list. I literally made a deck around Culture Gorilla and Locks just to prove a combo that worked and does so much damage. Because I'll even describe my field. It was second grade three turn against Steam Maidens, uh, ride Locks again so I can get a second Excel gift. I called Geograp Giant to one Excel gift. I called Culture Gorilla to my back center. Chat Noir was on the other Excel gift. Uh, Arn Bison was, no wait, no. Geograp and Arn Bison were on my Excel gifts. Chat Noir was on the front left rear guard circle. Uh, what was the other one? Amber's Triangular was on the... F no, Amber's Triangular wasn't on the field. Uh, Hamadon was on the front right rear guard circle. And I had uh, Vacuum Boy over here. Oh, wait, Chat Noir wasn't present for this turn. I mean, yeah. And then Vacuum was where I said Chat Noir was. And then that's pretty much what it was. I just got big numbers out of everything. And just 
rammed into my opponent. The only reason that they lived is because they pulled a critical trigger on their fifth damage, and then they had just enough of the nine of their ten hand cards, eight of them being triggers, to survive. Literally five k more, and I would have won. So actually, no, if it was one k more, literally, it's because they were a force deck against an Excel deck. That is why it was, because I believe it was a swing of 47 or 42. No, yeah, a swing of 47 to 48. Barely not enough. So, all around, it's it's a fun. And then we have our Excel gifts. I suggest running five. You don't need more than five, considering you should only... By the time you get to the five, you're probably already decked out. Excel one and Excel two. Excel one, well, for both of them, you put them into a new front and rear guard circle. You go top left, then top right, and then you alternate between the two. For Excel one, though, the unit on it gets plus 10 during your turn. Excel two, you draw a card when you place the marker, and then the unit on it gets plus five during your turn. So this one gets less power, but more consistency. This one gets more power, but less consistency. I want to... In my personal opinion, run XO2 just because, like, you, you know, you get your hand cards, and especially with you running all these grade 3s, even if you can get possibly three hand cards max from it, you most likely won't get a lot of guarding power out of it. So maybe run the XL, maybe do the XL2 play over the XL1, but if you think you're going to need that power, or maybe you just want to spam Culture Gorilla because Culture D Gorilla is so good, uh, and make everything down that circle that's a grade 3 immediately able to go for a Culture Gorilla skill, go with XL1. But all honesty, regardless, and then we have a quick shield over here when one of your uses hack is plus 5 for the. For the battle, nothing that you special about it, it's just a standard quick shield. But in all honesty, this deck is genuinely really fun. Lox is an amazing grade three. They did a really good job making it. He's not just a support card. He can be his own deck, still work, and because of, like all of these budget cards, like Lox is the savior of budget cards. Because I just took a bunch of cards that were either in my budget decks or like things that have been considered budget and non-meta cards, and you shove them all together with locks, and locks provide such support for them to the point where they actually get a step up. Locks has carried everyone on his back of the big ass elephant, and now I don't see anything locks is good. I don't think he's meta breaking, but I do think he's really good, and he brings a shine to all the great threes that didn't get shines before. Because I don't think Culture Gorilla got any scene play, and now if people play this deck, he will get screen play, and I will literally prioritize trying to get him screen time in a video that I will do with locks. I do not care if I have to more or less rig a match to just show off Culture Gorilla, because honestly, that play was really funny, and I really want people to see that. So that's the end of this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, don't forget to the Patreon, join Discord, follow the Twitch, and I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to stand up your vanguards.